Back at it again with another book review. Welcome to the Mere Mortals Book Reviews. I'm Kyron and today I have the book for you, An Unquiet Mind by the author K. Redfield Jameson. What is this book and what is it about? This book was published in 1995 and it's the author's history with the disorder of manic depressive or as it's known more colloquially nowadays bipolar disorder and I suppose it's, it's her story in general it's almost like a biograph, uh, biography of her and how she dealt with this disease throughout her life so it starts off with um, talking about her as a child going through a relatively normal childhood uh, in America she was part of an army base and what her parents were like what her sister was like blah 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 her initial symptoms of the disease or disorder, I suppose, uh, I'm not really, there's a little bit of a, a weird thing going on with the terminology there. And apparently it's uh, not good to say manic depressive because there's something about manic, which is insulting or degrading. I'm not too sure. I don't really understand that. So I'll sort of skip over that part of it. Uh, anywho, the initial symptoms she had as a, in getting into university and then her breakdown proper, I guess, where she really started to experience it and it was almost like it, her gene switched on and it just onset onto her really rapidly, followed by her states of highs and lows, and then I guess her learnings and relative stability afterwards, uh, getting more into her like later 30s by this, by this point. So it's, it's her story, essentially. That's what this book is. It's a relatively short book, it's about 200 pages. You can smash it out in four hours, uh, if, depending on your reading pace. And it's, it's an interesting book, and I'll go over some of the themes now. It's definitely her personal testimony, but, tambien, but, tambien, but it also has parts of her scientific knowledge through it. So she was actually a doctor, and in her research so and she became very interested in the disease itself so she started to research it more and more and this book has a lot of points during during the book of okay this is what um you know some symptoms you'll affect there's some things to look out for this is how you treat the disease and it's it's just interesting i suppose to to see her personal testimony also mixed with her scientific knowledge she has some very interesting little tales throughout the book. One of these is when she was uh, on one of her very, very high points. And for those who don't actually know what manic depressive is, I'll, I'll sort of give a brief explanation. Basically, you'll have these periods of insane productivity, creativity, energy, where you just want to go out, do things, get stuff done. I'm not going to sleep for three days straight, working on this project, whatever. But these would then be tempered by these uh, depressive periods where it's impossible to get out of bed. You feel like a gloominess of life. You can't do anything. At least so I've been told I don't actually have it. So I don't have that subjective experience. But from reading the book, I have a brief understanding now. And so she did have these amazing points where it was almost hallucinatory. It was hallucinatory feeling of passion, of love, of, of whatnot. And then these periods of the down parts, which inevitably from her talking about it, seemed to be a lot deeper in their destruction and more prolonged than the periods of insane productivity and, and happiness. So um, it, it got so bad for her that she actually attempted suicide at one point by overdosing on lithium. Fortunately for her, she... Uh, was not successful in this attempt, but it just shows that she got to such a bad place where she had a very good family, she had good friends, she had, you know, on paper, a good life. But with this disease, this disorder, it affected her so badly that she just, she got to that place where, you know, it's, it's not something we talk about it that regularly, but if a person reaches that place, they are very, very far gone and in need of some very dire help. Another of the themes of the book was the public reception and she sort of somewhat feared it, uh, especially you can see in the book where she was talking many, many times of how she would try and hide it from her friends and colleagues and 
only tell those intimately connected with her, uh, especially if she was working in a hospital. You don't really want someone going treating patients when they themselves are subject to such highs and lows and you're not going to get a consistent uh, output from them in terms of caring and, and medical treatments and whatnot. So she had to be very open with some people. And I guess with this book, and she talked more and more about it, and she's written a lot more books that uh, she just had to, at some point, come out and say, look, I have this disease, I have this disorder, this is what it's like for me, this is my story. So um, yeah, it was, it was just interesting, I guess, seeing that. And then also the pushback she did receive from some people where uh, she had these very negative moments or interactions with people who she thought were colleagues who she thought were friends but were very dismissive of of what she was going through and sort of treating it as if oh why don't you just suck it up and and not like you know not be a pussy why don't why would you how how could you ever think of attempting suicide like i'm so disappointed in you without that understanding of what was going on mentally and physically in her body one thing she absolutely smashes like repeatedly throughout the book is the necessity of medications. And I can totally get on board with this uh, to treat uh, bipolar disorder. It's you use lithium, which is a basically a metal and you, you take, um, I'm not sure how many pills a day or what the regimen is, but it, it is treatable in the sense that it will stop the highest, highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows and give a bit more stability and that's why i mentioned relative stability at the start is that it doesn't fully take away what you experience and there are also side effects which are quite negative and yeah make make the person drowsy make the person whatever so uh but for her she she absolutely nails this home like you need to take the medications it doesn't matter if what like what the side effects are in the sense that the, the side effects just cannot compete in terms of worse of, of bad of bad outcomes as it going through one of those depressive periods where you become suicidal also she mentions psychotherapy how that was very helpful for her and therapy in general and the support of friends and family she was very lucky she had uh, especially one point in the book where she her husband died of a heart attack and it, she was in a period of relative stability during this time. So she was able to get through that. But I think if she had been in a worse off place, not on her medications, not doing what she was supposed to be doing, that could have been the end of her because, um, yeah, it seems like that affected her very deeply and for a long time period as well, as you would imagine losing um, a loved one like that. Some of my own observations from the book it's uh yeah very brave of the author i have a lot of respect for her for telling her her story to the world uh, a very intimate story and uh, you know back in these days i think it's it's hard to tell because i was only just born around then but i think the the knowledge of what the bipolar disorder was and how it affects people and how it is a genetic disorder not something that is controllable internally like with free will is was very different back then as to how it is now probably there's still some prejudice nowadays but i if i had to guess i wouldn't say it's not as much as it was compared to say 20 years ago and then you know even going back further like 100 years where mania was just being just prescribed in like only women and it was being prescribed as like you know, just something they should suck up and do. Whereas nowadays we have the knowledge that, okay, no, it is a genetic thing. This is something that affects people in this way. Uh, it's not super obvious, the signs or manifestations of it. And it seemed like she was actually able to hide it quite well from a lot of people for a long time. So it's, it's just so, so, so interesting because it, obviously she's written this book and it's such a big impact on her life. The, it seemed like it was dictating her life for a long, long period of time, but not a whole new lot of people knew about it as well. She was able to hide it from them. She was able to manage to get by, which is really interesting because you'd think as a doctor, you'd sort of need like a steady output, like a very relative calmness throughout. But she was saying, saying how she would go through these 
super high periods where she would work for four days straight, get a whole lot of work done and then nothing for like two weeks afterwards or something like that. So it seems like the damage is more internal, uh, but there are signs that you can see as well for her. Uh, I don't think she's self-harmed, but I believe that is a relatively common occurrence for people with bipolar disorder, as well as going on like making very irrational decisions, such as she got into, I think it was tens of thousands of dollars in debt by just excessive buying. And she's got a couple of stories in there how she'd go to a pharmacy and buy like 30 snake bite kits because she was so worried and she needed to like give this to every one of her friends. Uh, and at the same time, she was getting her medication uh, for the lithium and the people at the, the desk were like, okay, we can sort of see what's going on here, you know. Uh, one of the observations that was, I suppose, most distressing for me was I found myself judging her quite harshly at times. And it, it was, uh, you know, I, I think it was like a combination of my own bullshit, internal, you know, messed up processes that I have and that we all seem to have uh and I guess just at times she had like a little bit of a victim tone going on as in like you know woe is me uh I, looking back as a whole at the book I, I feel that's pretty unfair to say but I think at times that was my impression from it but one of the things I just noticed was you know she was saying that she was doing these things and I would be like why are you doing that why uh so she would you know, treat her family really poorly. Her, her first husband, she was like very harsh and critical of during like the time period. And I was like, why would you treat someone so badly? They're your friends and family. They're trying to help you. Why would you spend 30 grand you don't have on cars and furniture and bullshit? Why would you try and attempt suicide? Why would you blah, blah, blah. And so I, I just kept on like, I, I couldn't grasp that she really had no choice in this. Like there was no... There's no, not a whole lot of free will going around when she was going through this. And there's something I'm, I'm trying to, I guess, acknowledge myself in that I'm, I'm very judgmental a lot of times for, for particular things as well. It's not just for one thing. And especially when it's a person removed from myself, such as this author who I've never met, but I'm willing to be a bit more lenient for people I know personally and can see their struggles. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, it's different for them. So uh, I think that's just a little a bit of a, my own internal thing. And I think this book was good in pointing that out to me because I, I just noticed at times like, God, you're being so judgmental of this, this poor lady. And you acknowledge yourself that there's not that much free will in the world to go around. And yet here you are saying like, you know what, she should have done better. So that was just a, uh, a little bit of a, a pointing out of my own bullshit, which was a, a good, a good little reflection for me personally to see. That being said, I found the book a little bit boring in in general. My intention of reading this book was I thought it would be more of the internal mind state of what it is like to feel depression because I'm just I'm very intrigued into that and I want to get a better idea of of what it is like. This book I found was more of her story and uh, I wanted the internal story not to know about her childhood, not to know about her decision to move to England and her lovers and, and all this other stuff. Like, yeah, I, I guess it, it helps out the story if that's what you're looking for, but that's not really what I was looking for in this book. So for me, it just didn't capture what I was looking for, which was what is the internal subjective experience the mind processes that go on, whereas she's like, this is my life, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's fine, but it wasn't what I was looking for. So, you know, maybe I should try and look for more poetry or art. That's maybe where I'll find more of what I was looking for rather than a book like this. So in summary, it's relatively short, 200 pages, 210 pages, something like that. So you can smash it out pretty quickly. Uh, and it is a biography, I would say. It's it treats, it deals with the subject matter of the bipolar disorder, but I feel it was more of her story and it was very interwoven into the story, but I felt it was like, you know, half biography, half about bipolar disorder and I wanted a book only on depression. So 
I'm giving it five out of ten. A little bit of harsh, but it's just because it sort of didn't meet what I was looking for. Um, and then as far as the writing and stuff and her story, I, you know, it's interesting, but she's not someone who's done something super peculiar or some, something super spectacular. That being said, it's a good little data point for me to be like, okay, this is sort of what it might feel like to have bipolar disorder. So uh, the other thing was I just didn't connect with her as a person. We're very different. She's sort of like, you know, 20, 20 something years older than me, uh, probably 30 something actually. She lives in the United States. She has a very different personality than me. I just didn't connect with her as a person. So, you know, maybe if it was more of a, a story of like a, a young guy going through this, I'd, I'd be a bit more interested in him as a character. So that's my opinion of the book, An Unquiet Mind by K. Redfield Jameson. Was something pragmatic I'm going to take from it? Just don't be as judgmental. Man. Just do not treat people and judge people without getting the full story and you're never going to be able to get the full story. So just be more lenient with them. And especially, I think for me, I just need to be more aware of my own internal processes that are wanting me to be like, you know what, that's the reason they did this. It's because they're a bad person. That The reason they did this is because they're weak. Uh, it's not useful. So uh, that's one thing I, I want to work on. And that's it for today. If you like this, please subscribe. Please give a like. And I'll be back pretty regularly, pretty be back pretty soon. That's it for today. Kyron out.